you're sat there cold you should prepare yourself to be unintelligible on the phone My name's Paul Roebuck, I'm a counsellor and therapist. To give you my full title, I'm an emotional therapeutic counsellor, which means I specialise in providing emotional wellbeing and support to a wide range of people. I've got this blood in my mouth, I can taste it. I also knew that I was biting the side of my tongue, but I'd sort of got used to it, and you know, you're busy, you've got your job, you've got life, you, you don't pay particular attention to it. On that day, I woke up with a taste of blood and thought, I need I need to talk to someone. So, got back home, went to the dentist, because I, I knew it was a dental rather than a doctor. Sat down in a chair, put my head back. She opened my mouth, she looked in the mouth, and the look on her face will save me forever. She was horrified at what she saw in my mouth was my tongue, and the tongue had significantly swollen. It had got two what I now know to be areas of damage to it. It had got bite marks down one side where I'd been biting it because it had swollen. And she just said straight away, you need to go to hospital, you need to get your tongue looked at. absolutely terrified. Anyway, I sat down in front of this guy, he said, um, Mr. Roebuck, I'm afraid it's positive. So I'm thinking, what, uh, what does positive mean? But I'm thinking there's 10 people here staring at me. It's not positive good, it's positive it is cancer. The, the diagnosis and the biopsy results don't obviously come back. I'll never forget that. Um, I'll never forget that as long as I live. It was horrific. So I said, any questions? I'm like, what about my speech? He just sat there, cold and clinically said, well, the way we, the way we calibrate your speech is based on telephone. He said, you should prepare yourself to be unintelligible on the phone. Everything I trained for, every every part of my being, my body, my life, my dream, my hopes, everything was predicated on being a counter talking therapist and being a talking therapist that can't talk. It was like horrific. So I said, You'll be unintelligible on the phone. I remember saying to him, Don't worry about it, don't use the phone. say you've had three or four months about worrying about speaking and now you've been told talk so I think I said the alphabet I'm like A B C D E I could hear myself I could hear the letters <laughs> can't even imagine how relieved I felt and then she walked my son in, so Christian stood at the end of the bed. I'm like, hello son, I'm okay. I could still talk, I still talk today. I don't care what I, I do not care what I sound like, I don't care if I've got a lisp or if it's, you know, certain words I struggle with, but seriously, when you're all told you're not going to be able to talk. And you can and you can hear it, and you know it's fairly lucid. It's just awesome. Best feeling in the world. The final thing I want to appeal to is if you've got anything going on in your mouth, you've got any pain, any pimples, any bleeding, any soreness, 
any sensitivity of any nature, walk into your dentist, ask a dentist to just have a quick look. It takes a minute, it's non-intrusive. And if they need you to go and get checked, go and get yourself checked. I procrastinated in truth. I knew something was wrong a few years ago and I just waited and waited. Had I gone years earlier when I should have gone, I went and I've had about a third more of my tongue to hang on to. So if you've got any doubts, go and see your dentist, please, today.